Yeah, hi guys, this is Dr. Scott Nall from the Village Osteopath. Uh, welcome to our open office hours educational portion. So today uh, we're going to talk about estrogen replacement in your skin. Um, so as many of you know, I do a lot of bioidentical hormone replacement uh, therapy. And usually when we're talking about estrogen, it has to do with heart health and bone health and just its anti-aging um, effects uh, on the cardiovascular system. But today uh, we're going to talk about its uh, role in skin. So many of you are probably taking um, either supplements to help with the skin or you're spending a lot of money on creams and ointments and lotions uh, to try to help uh, keep that youthful appearance of the skin. Um, and it could be you're doing some aesthetic treatments that we've been offering here. Uh, for instance, if you've been looking at our social media, uh, recently I've been posting pictures of my face after having some micro needling done uh, with a product called Pep Factor. So it could be that those products aren't working to their potential because um, of uh, low hormone levels. So let's take a look at what research shows in terms of how um, hormone replacement affects the skin. Here. There we go. So, like I said before, normally when we talk about estrogen or hormone replacement, we're talking about heart health and bone health. So, keeping your um, uh, trying to prevent uh, osteoporosis, osteopenia, heart attacks, coronary artery disease, uh, strokes, um, all those things. But it can have a great impact on your skin as well. So most of you remember, uh, or maybe maybe you don't. I, I didn't think about this at, at first, but the skin actually is considered an organ. We learned that back in high school, learned it in medical school. Um, the skin is, a, is the largest organ in the body. And so when it becomes dysfunctional, uh, things can happen. The skin uh, helps protect us from the outside world, so from environmental damage and dehydration. And it also is what people look at when they look at us. And so that's important too from a, um, you know, a sociology standpoint. So what are things that can cause aging of the skin? Well, one of them is just plain old father time here. Um, and this is one thing we don't have um, any help for from a medical standpoint, you know, or really any standpoint. We're all getting older uh, every single day, and that's something we can't prevent. Uh, so there are other things we can do to try to prevent this, though. But as we all know, all of our cells age, which is why that um, it's not just our skin looks bad. You know, over time, um, you know, our vessels get a little bit harder, um, our organs don't work quite as well as they used to, um, and things just kind of get a little bit, uh, you know, aged. So that's something we have to deal with. Sun exposure is a huge uh, contributor to skin aging, and unfortunately, usually by the time you start thinking about your skin, uh, the damage has already been done. Uh, so while I know a lot of us will start covering up as, as we get older, wearing hats and long sleeves and putting sunscreen on, me personally, I was a lifeguard, so I've got a lot of this in my past. A lot of burns and uh, tans and rubbing oil on so I can get that nice bronze color. And, you know, here I am at 40 and I'm starting to get little spots popping up here and there. So uh, while sun exposure is important for vitamin D levels, you know, probably somewhere between 15 to 20 minutes of good exposure to sun a day is great. Uh, overexposure where it's causing burning is not. So just keep that in mind. Toxin exposure. So um, some people have high toxin exposure, some people don't. Um, I live in an old house, I'm always working on it, so I get a lot of toxin exposure. I was just helping pour a foundation the other day and uh, I did have gloves on, but had I not had gloves on, that cement and, and the concrete we were using is very alkaline and can cause a lot of damage to the skin. And so the skin will end up being super, super dry afterwards. I know when I was laying tile a few months ago, um, I was not wearing gloves at that point. After it was over, my skin was just awful uh, for days after that because of touching that uh, thin set that I was putting down uh, to lay tile. So toxin exposure can have a big impact on that. Uh, hydration, this is something we can definitely control. So drink, making sure you're drinking plenty of water. And we'll talk about uh, the effects of uh, hormone replacement on hydration status. Uh, it might be a little surprising actually. And then finally hormones, this is a hormone. Uh, so our hormone levels have a great uh, contribution to the quality and, and, um, and the healthy nature of our skin. So we'll talk about that. So in general, um, low estrogen leads to less collagen. 
uh, less hydration, more negative testosterone effects, which we'll talk about that, uh, poor wound healing. Uh, so just to sum it up, basically less of the good stuff and more of the bad stuff. So let's talk about collagen. So what is collagen? Collagen is the, the backbone of a lot of tissues in our body. Uh, so tendons, muscles, joints, cartilage, um, and our skin uh, has a lot of uh, collagen content. There's different types of collagen you might have heard uh, from supplements. There's type 1 collagen, type 2. I think Dr. Axe has a, um, a supplement. Collagen has like uh, you know a million different collagens in it. Um, but the main one we look at is type 1 through 3 uh, when it comes to our bodies and kind of supplementation. Uh, but we also have our own natural collagen that, that's, that's going on. And in studies that look at osteoporosis, which is loss of collagen um, and thinning of the bones, uh, where it makes the bones uh, weak and brittle, there's a, a huge correlation between bone loss and poor quality skin which kind of links back to the common denominator there is the collagen. So trying to, if you're doing things to stimulate collagen in the face, if you're doing it systemically, it's also going to help with bone health too. So um, we'll talk about that. So let's look at collagen loss. This is huge. 30% uh, loss in the first five years after menopause. So as soon as you hit menopause, either through natural aging, you know, around age 50 or so, or if you've gone through surgical menopause, uh, so you've had a hysterectomy and they remove your ovaries. Within the first five years, you, you, can retro, you, can, you can age quite significantly from just the way you look by having that reduction in collagen and starting, starting to have bone thinning. Uh, so that's very important for those who want to go on hormone replacement to try to go on as soon as possible. While hormones will kind of help retro age you to a certain degree, uh, trying to keep you from aging in the first place um, as quickly, you know, rapid aging, trying to stop that in its tracks would be better. Um, so interesting enough though, estrogen really does not help with collagen production it seems in studies, but what it does, it stops or slows down testosterone's a negative effect on collagen. So um, once again, this shows that hormones need to be in balance. It's not that testosterone is bad. Testosterone has great effects in terms of like building muscle mass, uh, decreasing uh, visceral fat, um, and also helping with uh, energy production and libido and sex drive, but by itself, it can it does cause degradation of collagen, and unless estrogen is there to kind of block that or, or balance it out, uh, it can't override in that response and and cause some issues. So that's what estrogen does; it blocks that testosterone response. So, oh. This should say the good old days. It's blocked there. It just says the go. <laughs> it's the 1980s. Um, phone home. So we got ET here. Uh, so back in the 80s, a, a researcher named um, Brincat, he did four studies and um, looking at collagen levels in women uh, in menopause. And he found that um, in women who were doing HRT, hormone replacement therapy, 48% higher collagen content than those who were not. Uh, and this was shown over multiple studies, so it wasn't just a one-time thing. So that's that's very important when we're looking at research and how it affects, uh, affects us. Okay, so skin thickness. This is very interesting because there's a lot of good details here. Um, studies show there was about 3% increase in skin thickness after just six months of hormone replacement therapy. You'll see this a lot when I'm talking about skin. It seems that most of the skin benefits are seen after six months. So uh, once again, if you're initiating hormone replacement treatment or therapy, uh, it's good to have realistic expectations. It's not going to be something that happens overnight. Most of the cardiac and um, uh, uh, body composition changes when you start hormone replacement treatment uh, can happen about a year out in studies. And so I tell people that and they get real discouraged, like, oh, I want it to happen now. Well, the changes are happening now, but to get a full manifestation of those, it does take some time. Uh, you didn't get this way, you know, overnight. You know, when you went through menopause, it wasn't just boom, everything just deteriorated. Uh, it took some time. And so it takes some time to get things built back up as well. Now, interesting enough, when it comes to skin thickness, you can look here, if you remember the layers of the skin from 
uh, your biology class, you have the epidermis, which is the outside protective layer. That's the part we see. You have the dermis. This is where um, the glands and the hair follicle and, the, and some of the vessels live in here. And then you have subcutaneous fat, which is the part that kind of gives you the plumpness, right? And so with hormone replacement therapy, the thickness was an increase in the dermis here. It did not stop thinning of the epidermis, which continues to happen uh, over time. And so that can give the skin a translucent appearance as we age, but it, it did help with kind of the plump and the elasticity in there and the ability of the skin to kind of regenerate over time. So it did not help with that translucent appearance, but it did help with just the overall skin quality in the dermis. So the oil glands are still gonna work effectively, hair uh, follicles still gonna be nourished um, but this part gets a little bit thin and can thin out. Now you can, there are some aesthetic procedures that are used to help stimulate this. Uh, so that would be like chemical peels, microneedling with PEP factor like we talked before. Maybe we can do some videos on those things that can help with the epidermal part so you don't get that thinning sensation or thinning look. Uh, but definitely hormones are gonna help with this part in here. Elastin. So that's our slinky, right? You want the slinky to go back to its original shape. So when you push in on the face, you push on the skin, you don't want to leave fingerprints there where you were pushing before. You don't want to have that saggy look. So um, elastin content is very important. And so hormone replacement can help with that too. Um, once again, the study showed elastin content increases after about six months of being on uh, HRT. Okay, next, water content. Now this one, uh, not, not as great in terms of studies. For one reason, that measuring water content, there's not a good standardized way to test cellular uptake of water. Uh, looking at the studies, there's all sorts of different ways to measure it. No one really knows how to do it. It seems to be difficult to do that. Uh, and so uh, what, what the authors conclude is that this is uh, inconclusive in terms of does it help with water content. Um, so just continue to drink your water and that's gonna be the best you can do there. Now wrinkles. This is huge for everybody. As we age, we start to get wrinkly and we don't like that. So studies have shown that there was a decrease in wrinkle count. Uh, so they looked at people who were on hormone replacement and those who were not. And there was a wrinkle count they did and they showed the people who were on replacement had a decreased number of wrinkles. Now this was negated by smoking. So if you were a smoker, while you'll still get the benefits of the uh, dermal uh, stimulation uh, of the dermis, uh, it's not going to translate into less wrinkles, okay? So quit smoking. It's gross. Nails. Now, being on hormone replacement automatically means you're going to get big, thick, luscious nails with heart shapes in them and neon tips. And they might even glow in the dark. Um, <laughs> no, but no, really. There was a study that looked at um, blood flow to the nail beds. So they did a Doppler ultrasound looking at how... Um, much blood flow was getting to the tips of the fingers there. So as we age, blood flow decreases uh, most readily to the extremities because that's the farthest part out. So feet and hands. And so nails will start to suffer as we age. So you'll notice that your nails aren't nearly as thick or they're brittle or they're ridged. Weird things are going on with your nails as we age. They get fungus in there and you get put on medication to try to help with that. And it doesn't help as well as it did back when you were you know, younger because blood flow is poor. Um, being an osteopathic physician, uh, we, A.T. Still, our founder, talked all the time about blood flow. He said the rule of the artery, the rule of the artery is, is supreme, meaning that if blood flow is diminished, disease can then set in. So hormone replacement does help increase blood flow to the tips here and to the nail bed specifically. Okay, wound healing, this is important. So as we age, now like I said before, that epidermis starts to get thinner uh, which then predisposes us to, to having kind of like skin that tears and rips and bruises easily. Uh, so before where you might be able to bump into something and have a problem, now you bump into something and the skin being thin tears. Now this was an interesting study because it looks at the full thickness of the skin. This was a dermatological procedure they were looking at uh, called a punch biopsy where they take what's essentially like a hole punch you would use in a, in a punch through a paper and they punch through the skin to try to get both the epidermis and the dermis, and it stops the subcutaneous fat. Uh, this is important if you're trying to figure out if uh, like a superficial skin cancer has penetrated deep or if it's growing out, or if you're just trying to get a complete excision of something 
without using a scalpel, you can use a punch biopsy. And what they found in this study was that um, people who were on hormone replacement healed much quicker than people who weren't. So those bumps and bruises that you get as you age, hormone replacement should help you heal better. Or if you're getting some type of aesthetic procedure, let's say you're getting microneedling done, uh, that's going to cause some superficial damage to try to stimulate your body to heal. Well, being on hormones, you might get a better healing response um, from those procedures and be able to get back out um, without you know, less downtime from the procedures, what I'm trying to get there. Okay. So let's bottom line this real quick. So estradiol hormone, which is part of our hormone replacement, leads to the, to the following. So you get thicker skin, um, mainly in the dermis, we talked about, less wrinkles unless you smoke, so stop smoking. Um, more collagen, so that equals better skin and stronger bones. So if you're taking hormone replacement, usually you're going to get a systemic effect from that. So it should equal you know, stronger bones. And what we've seen here in the practice is you have people's DEXA scans uh, usually improve when they go on hormones their um, bone density tests. Better wound healing, so that's always good. Uh, better blood flow to the nail beds, which equals stronger nails. And then finally, more elastic skin, so you get, you get less of the sag, okay? So aesthetics and HRT. So if you're getting aesthetic treatments right now, so you're getting microneedling done, you're getting uh, um, chemical peels done, um, or you're spending a lot of money on, on skin care, this could help those where your, the procedures are working better, so you don't have to do them as often. Or it could be you can cut down on some of these products that you're having to use to try to keep your skin moisturized and, and, and elastic looking. Um, you know, HRT, you can then combat the skin aging both from the inside with the hormone replacement and on the outside with the products. Okay. So if this interests you at all and you're interested in possibly exploring uh, whether hormone replacement is right for you, you could do a discovery call with me. So you can either visit us on our website at villageosteopath.com or give us a call at 317-491-5272. We'll send you a little questionnaire you can fill out to look at what your goals are with hormone replacement to see if there's anything else that might be going on medically with you that needs to be addressed uh, through our functional medicine program. And then we'll do a quick 15-20 uh, minute phone call where I review all that with you and try to see if that you are a good fit with for our practice. So uh, I've been doing hormone replacement now um, since 2007, uh, so quite a while. Um, Gone through multiple trainings in that, uh, always looking at the most up-to-date protocols in terms of what research shows is best and safest. So look forward from hearing from you. And this is Dr. Scott Nall from the Village Osteopath, helping you restore your health and optimize your life.